Thank you. Thank you for being with us on today, Prophet Will Burden. I'm excited about this segment. We're talking about the uh, the apologetics. Where are the modern day um, apologetic uh, apologetics? We as we go forward, we uh, there are those there are emerging voices. There are those that's already been on the scene. There are pioneers. Um, they all have a mis- a message. They all have a, a a sense of defense. But who will defend the gospel? So as we go forward, uh, Prophet, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? and or your ministry? Sure. Well, um, we've been saved since we were very, very young. Uh, Of course, growing up in an urban uh, situation, uh, you name it, we saw it. Um, And so this is, and I mention this, I make mention of this now because um, a lot of our prophetic training is not going to come from church at all. A lot of our apostolic training is not going to come from church at all. It's going to come from hands-on in life. Yeah. And so, and so fast forward now, um, we've we've been preaching for a long time, and I'm just I'm just cutting to the chase here. <laughs> we've been mm-hmm. we've been seeing things, we've been developing things, and so now, um, you know, we're launching Love Force uh, Ministry 2020. Two things we're definitely going to do: uh, Love Force. That's going to be the the hub for the saints. Uh, to kind of get built up and get nurtured in the kingdom of God. But then we also have uh, Dominion Business Global. Yeah. That's our specific prophetic ministry. Uh, mm-hmm. All this is being, top of the year, all this is being launched uh, simultaneously. So yeah. we have one ministry, which is Dominion Builders, uh, Dominion Business Global. That's the prophetic, specific prophetic ministry. Okay. Um, and um, prophetic training, prophetic uh, development. But uh, God has shown me how. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. He has shown me how to go into the tribes of Israel and uh-huh. use the reality of the tribes of Israel to train the church in what it means to be in what we're calling uh, uh, prophetic precision. Uh-huh. And so, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm saying a lot right now, but uh, I'm excited. You, you know, prophetic I'm kind precision, of... When you say prophetic precision, from what standpoint? Okay, so, first of all, there needs to be a reform in what we call the prophetic, okay, a lot of what a lot of what is what is what is being deemed as prophetic now is nothing more than just inspirational uh, preaching coupled with mm-hmm. uh, foretelling and forecasting and fortune telling, mm-hmm. and and prophetic ministry is way more than that. It is, and, and, mm-hmm. and as a matter of fact, it is it is it is it is, it is critical that we reform um, um, both the prophetic and the apostolic. And I always say this. I said the reason why the prophetic has gone way, way left, and now we're just using it as a money-making gambit, is because we've never got the apostolic right, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so when we focus on what true apostolic ministry is and apostolic succession is, Mm -hmm. now we now we have a platform. Now we have a a, a framework to Mm -hmm. to focus in on. On what it means, and when I when I when I'm specifically supernatural, okay. right? King Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world," mm-hmm. and so God is showing God is showing, and this is a segue right into the conversation that, that, of, of topic of tonight, the modern day apologetics. Um, what essentially has happened in the earth is the the, the scriptures have been hijacked by religion. Mm. And so we've been hijacked by religion. So therefore, consequently, every, our models, our modes, our, our, our ways of doing things, although a lot of it has been sincere, and I hate to even say this, but it's been sincerely wrong. Hijacked a lot of it has been hijacked in a sense of me? concept. So hijacked in a sense of um, concept, or hijacked in a sense of um, soul and spirit. Right. So. Both, because mm. one proceeds out of the other, right? Mm-hmm. This is why you have to have the salvation of the soul. But then you also have must you must have a revelation of Jesus Christ. You yeah. must do ministry out of the revelation of the kingdom of God and out of revelation of Jesus Christ. Not of, um, and then nothing against it because you got to be in the world but not of the world, and you have to have your yeah. your business straight, such as you know five one c threes and all that type of deal. But 
there's a stark difference between a nonprofit organization and the Church of Living God. Mm-hmm. Two different things. Mm-hmm. No, just just like your, if you take it into marriage, what was told to me, and I, I run with it and I share it all the time. Your marriage covenant has nothing to do with your agreement with the, with the state that you get married in. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So my North mm-hmm. Carolina marriage license has nothing to do with my covenant with my wife at all. Mm-hmm. At all. So what I'm saying. So what we now now we have flesh and spirit. We have mm-hmm. flesh and spirit. We have carnality and we have spirit. We have that which is good, so we think it's good. It's done out of carnal means, such as, uh, you know, and nothing wrong with it. And, I mean, yeah. we have to be trained. We have to be educated. But you know, mm-hmm. when you start relying on psychology to build up a church, which is which is a supernatural thing, that's where we are. Where we are right now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. You know, it's it's it's, so it's pseudo. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so in the sense of um, when we speak of the apologetics, in the sense of um, the meaning of it, the Greek meaning of it, um, it speaks of a defense or defending religious doctrines through systematic argumentation and or discourse. And you were talking about precision, and you were talking about uh, pretty much uh, ministries in regards to what you're putting into place, executing, implementing, building, and that is your legacy. Would you consider yourself to be the voice of not only the merging, but at the same time bridging the gaps to defend or be that defender for the kingdom view? Well, I have to, I have to humbly say yes. Mm-hmm. For this really, for this reason, this reason alone, mm-hmm. when we when we did when we deal with tackling the, the who are these who is this voice who who are the, mm-hmm. the the modern day who are the cutting edge if it as it were these are they who are the sons mm-hmm. of God mm-hmm. right and we say yeah. sons of God but we are, we know that that's that's that's, a, that's an inclusive term sons of sons it simply means offspring so the offspring Lord Jesus. The offspring, mm-hmm. the sons and daughters of God, mm-hmm. they are the ones that will be the champion for the kingdom in this hour. Mm-hmm. And so, and so, when I when I approach the Word of God, when I approach mm-hmm. ministry models, and when I approach the way we're doing things, I'm literally going into the realm of the Holy Ghost going into the realm of the spirit, going into the heavenlies, and asking God to reveal the original intent of his holy word, and that's how we're moving forward. Okay. That's how we have to move forward. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is we're in the middle of a reformation. It's not being preached, but here's the thing. This reformation is different in that this is a revolution. Mm. And so we know the root word for revolution. What if they're um, Go ahead. in their that mindset that they're already thinking, thinking, praying, thinking, um, and bringing about a, a reshaping of minds for reformation? They are in their minds. Yeah. They're already thinking that they're, they're bringing reformation. Um, you talking about the existing what we have now in terms of church? Yes. Well, <laughs> again, I, I, have to, I have to keep quoting Jesus. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Why do I keep mentioning that? I'm mentioning that because he's showing me it's a dangerous thing to look, in, at, look at earthly models and look okay. at what we think we know okay. and, and look. It, it's, it's, no, 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 no. And, and, and even more so, our job is to make disciples and Jesus builds his church, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. If when Jesus is building his church and we're making disciples, this is this is the blueprint, right? Mm-hmm. This is how this is how this, this is done. And what, what 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 we call church now is nothing more. Okay, let me say what I want to say because I'm trying to be nice mm-hmm. here. Um, how do we know? How do we know if it's the real thing? How do we know if it's not religion? It's not the same old. 
wrapped in something a new a new uh, a wrapper is that if it builds kings, if it establishes oh. sons, right? Oh. If it raises up sons and daughters and not creates slaves, that is the mark. But mind you now, Jesus says, I forget the exact reference, but he looked into the Gentile world, right? He looked into oh. the order of the Romans, and he said, oh. you see these, you see how they lord over each other, right? Oh. This should not be named among you. What am I saying? I'm saying I'm going back. Let's go to the book of Shemot, commonly known as Exodus, chapter 19. The -hmm. premise for what we're supposed to be doing is the king priesthood, right? Once we recognize all of us are kings and priests and not members and slaves, then the the world will begin to see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. But the minute you see me and you you associate me with a church membership, that's the problem right there. Because when I see you, when I see my brothers and my sisters, I should immediately be identified with the supernatural and the spiritual royalty that they are, right? Mm-hmm. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to know what church you go to. I want to know, do you know the Father? Yes. Mm-hmm. And so oh, no, I'm saying a lot. when I identify, uh, no, you're, 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 you're on point. So, when, <clears throat> so what's the reason for identifying um, the membership in association? To is it for the extension of who they are, or is it for um, the advancement of of what they're doing? And I'm asking this um, <clears throat> because as one becomes the voice um, for the for the souls in the wilderness and dark, the dark places, bringing about change and reformation. When one is going, their mindset scope is to make and bring about a difference, a change, a transformation. And so you said keyword slavery. So when do one become? This question from twofold. When do one find themselves becoming a slave? Is it when it's too late, or is it when they have been awakened? Okay, so it's two. It's 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 actually it's both. Here's what I mean. Mm-hmm. We've cre- oh God, because I, I you know when we have these conversations, because I can go into dates, times, places. Mm-hmm. And we can trace and track where the corruption of the church come from. Mm-hmm. It's, it's no secret. It's no mm-hmm. secret. But yes, I want to keep this Go conversation ahead. up. Up. Say it again. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so I want to keep this conversation uplifting and edifying. But we can tra- we can mm-hmm. we can go into Jesuit. So we can go into the Jesuit order, right? We can go into mm-hmm. these different councils, even before the Council of Nicaea. It's, it's stuff that happened way before, even before then. And so I'm, and, that, and as an apologist, and uh, you know, church history is critical. Um, and I'm still, I'm gonna answer a question about slavery, but I'm just trying to okay. make make a point here, because it's the slavery, it, it's like the Matrix, right? If mm-hmm. you're familiar with the movie, mm-hmm. most of us are slaves until we are awakened, mm-hmm. right? And once we are awakened to the system. Okay, let's 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 for example, let's, let's keep it real simple here. Once again, I honor you, my sister, not just because you're an apostle, not because you're my sister in the Lord, but I actually honor the authority, the sovereign authority that you have in your private domain. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when we when this this is why we work, we work because mm-hmm. we're not trying to lord over each other. I'm not trying to bring you under me, and you're not trying to bring me under you. But no, but two kingdoms, right, uh, yes. two houses, if you will, two domains come together mm-hmm. to fight a com- common enemy. Yes. And that's how it's supposed to be, the king of kings. How else would he be mm-hmm. king of kings? Mm-hmm. So, the issue is, so the issue is, Lord, have mercy. We are already free. We are already yes. priests, kings and priests, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we mm-hmm. don't need no ordination ceremony. That's the mm-hmm. issue right there. And again, mm-hmm. I'm, and now when I preach this, it sounds like anarchy. But mm-hmm. no. Either what he did on the cross is a finished work or it's not. That's and true. we're not talking, we're not, we're not speaking against spiritual authority. We're not saying, you know, there shouldn't be different ceremonies and rites of passage. We're not, we're not talking about that. We're saying that's yeah. definitely, that's, that's, a, that's a sign. Like water baptism, mm-hmm. it's an ordinance. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's definitely an order. But if you're telling yeah. me I have to go through all of this to, to experience the supernatural power of God, so that's a problem for me. Mm. That's a problem for me. You, so you're telling me I go through all these ranks. I got to go through all this bureaucracy and red tape to enjoy 
the fact that I'm a son of God. Something's very wrong mm-hmm. with that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Something is very mm-hmm. wrong with that. And so what's happening is people are reading the scriptures, and they're reading scriptures like in Ephesians, and they're reading the scriptures like in what was happening in Colossians, and and just like what happened with me, because uh, I'm mm-hmm. Church of God in Christ, born and raised. But when I went mm-hmm. home from Tuesday and Tuesday night and Friday night services, Sunday services, and read the word for myself, I began to say to myself, there's got to be more to God than what I'm experiencing. This can't mm-hmm. be the same thing. Mm-hmm. So that's you like experiencing a religious consciousness versus, versus a God consciousness. Th- and that's exactly my point, the mm-hmm. God consciousness. And we, and we can't be afraid mm-hmm. to say that we are the sons of God. We can't be afraid to say that I have a, I have a, I have a my Christ conscience keeps me in God mode, mm-hmm. if you can receive that. I'm always in God mode. I'm always in sanctification. I'm always in holiness. Why? Mm-hmm. Because I'm in Christ, mm-hmm. right? And, and particularly when I live a crucified life. So mm-hmm. it sounds like we're, going to, we're, 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 we're saying a lot and we're, we're going on a rabbit trail, but we're actually not. It's real simple. Mm-hmm. People, we reduced, and I say it like this, and I, and I say this respectfully, but, I'm, I'm, I, I, but I mean this with my, my every fiber of my being. We've, we've, we've taken the people of God out of their sovereign status as sons mm-hmm. and daughters of God, and we've reduced them to membership. Mm-hmm. And so now everything about your spiritual walk has to be associated based on who's your pastor and does your pastor approve of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Well, the truth of the matter is all of the five, you look at the scripture, there's not one single scripture that's written to one person. Those the letters mm-hmm. that we call pastorals and the epistles, they're written to churches. Yeah. They're not written to one person. So what I'm saying is the the actual pastor is the literally the fivefold ministry itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and so when you don't have the apostle in operation, you don't have the teacher in operation, but you don't have the advancers in operation. I'm talking about in one congregation and the one local church as we say. If you if you can't identify all five of those operating at the same time, then that, this, this is where the deficiency comes in. This is where the one-man burnout comes in. This is why we have all this scandal and all this craziness, because the church is not designed for one person to lead it. Mm. Lord, have mercy. I'm going off right now. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. So I am so, becoming members. Have, I'm, I'm addressing this because we have those that are going through transition. <clears throat> they have those that are now walking in their God-given purpose because they find themselves in a place where wanting to be utilized, but because they were counted as members and their gifting were neglected, they became stagnated. <clears throat> and right. so they didn't become the voice of defense or the defender of the gospel because they were trapped in time trapped in a space and trapped in a hmm, a role and not functioning within the ability given or the full capacity. Right. So that's where the frustration comes in. So how can one defend the gospel and become the defender of the gospel without one becoming threatened that that voice is now awakening? No. Okay. And, mm-hmm. Are you? Are you go Josh, ahead. Should, I, should I answer now? Yes, go ahead. Oh, okay. So we've missed the Elijah concept altogether. And here's what I mean: mm-hmm. Who was Elijah's spiritual? Who was Elijah's spiritual father? Mm. Right. Who was Elijah's mm-hmm. spiritual father? This is, the, this is the, mm-hmm. one of the number one people we, we, we use in terms of quote-unquote spiritual authority, Elijah and Elisha. Mm-hmm. And we start pairing up to Paul and Timothy. And even with that, who was Paul's mm-hmm. spiritual father? Come on. Who? Mm-hmm. Why, why did Je- Lord have mercy. Why did Jesus never call, why did Jesus never tell the disciples that he was their spiritual father? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going somewhere with this. Let me, just keep, let me just keep building. The last thing Jesus pronounced, right, the last office, if you will, that he, that he pronounced on the apostles on his way to the cross, this is the very last thing he called them. He called them friends. Mm-hmm. He didn't call them apostles. He didn't call them disciples. 
He called them friends. What's my point? Mm -hmm. First thing thing is first. You're going to have to have a direct, solid relationship with with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the very first thing. You're going to have to be one. You have to move and synchronization with the Father, Son, and, and the Holy Spirit. And you have to know, number two, you have to know that you are a voice. We are voices crying out, and not a wilderness per se, but it's a, mm-hmm. it's a, will, it's a religious wilderness, uh-huh. right? We are the voices crying out in a re- religious wilderness. Number three, yes. you have to know, you have to know mm-hmm. that you are going to have to die all mm-hmm. kinds of deaths in order to really proclaim the kingdom of God. Come on. If you don't, set, if you don't settle these three things, you're going to be in trouble. So how do we be that mm-hmm. voice? We be that voice by simply standing up and being the sons of God and doing what Jesus did. Jesus took on, listen, the very ones we talk about was the Pharisees, right? We use them all the time. Mm-hmm. And we say, oh, it was, a, you know, <clears throat> they had a religious spirit. No, it was deeper than that. I can't oh, go into oh. it right now. Time, time. Pardon me? Mm-hmm. I said, come on, go ahead. Go okay, ahead so identify the, the religious spirit, though. Because, I mean, again, because one was trained to shape, to think um, like that. So when things, and a, a lot of it, too, is that because we're not operating in our full capacity and we're operating below um, our ascension level, we, we run into friction or resistance. So when things happen, right. they pull us, us out of, we immediately put up a wall of resistance and say, it's the enemy, the enemy. But like you said, and just going back to the religious or the religious spirit, you said there was another name or another um, entity or operation, but you didn't want to go into that. But just a, just a oh. little snippet. Okay, okay. No. So this, mm-hmm. Okay, this was, so this is what I mean. So, this, so, the, so the origins of Lord Jesus, Lord have mercy, that was here today. The origins of the Pharisees can be traced back to, the, to, to a priesthood called the Shining Ones, mm-hmm. right? I'm just going to give you a little, mm-hmm. just, a, just a, I can't, you know, again, I'm trying to be mm-hmm. conscious of time here. They're called, they, were, mm-hmm. they were called the Shining Ones. Why are you mentioning mm-hmm. that? I'm mentioning that because they were something totally, a totally different order altogether, but they were used mm-hmm. in the name of Abraham to push their mm-hmm. occult agenda. Mm-hmm. I'm mentioning that because it's, it's the same thing going on with us right now. We are in a system that, 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 okay, we're in Christianity, but Christianity is so far off from the scriptures, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. And all one has to do is read for yourself to see how far, far off we are, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. It's not rocket science. You understand? Mm-hmm. How, did you get, how did you get this from that? And when you actually do uh, an actual honest word search, the ecclesia mm-hmm. and the church are really not the same thing. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to behave here, mm-hmm. because because this is one of the things that the prophetic does and the apostolic does, and being in a true ap- uh, um, apologist, right? Mm-hmm. When you are a true apologist, the very first thing you do in any religious environment or any mm, church, regardless of denomination, you immediately expose the contradictions. Come on, right? Come on. But they can't do immediately to expose the contradiction. That's what present day truth does. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. We're on the same page. So again, mm-hmm. I'm excited about this. This is this is my because I've been going through this my entire life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Being shut down and being called, you know, you know, a bastard and, and, and all and, and the only thing I want to do is just worship God and being to be the beauty of holiness. You know, mm-hmm. it, it never it's never been about a title for me, it's never been about but it's always been about doing this thing the right way. So mm-hmm. you're telling me I got to, you know, do, do, and, and, I, and again, there's nothing wrong with submission, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. I'm going to ask a question here. You can take it. You can, you can, I want you to respond to this. What king relinquishes his authority, right, of his house mm-hmm. and of his domain except he be at war That's with true. another another king? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is what's going on in the church. Yeah. You're telling a king, you're, te- you're telling people to come into the door, drop your gifts, drop who you think you are, and totally submit mm-hmm. to me. Come on. That's a problem. That's not kingdom. That's not the kingdom of God. 
Because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of priests. It's a kingdom. Mm-hmm. 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 And again, this sounds this this sounds like anarchy. This sounds like you know you know rebellion. No, this sounds like freedom and liberty, mm-hmm. right? And 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 freedom and liberty sounds like sounds crazy to a, to the person who's already a religious slave. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. So they must drop who they are, their identity, mm. their role, their their role, rank, and reign to submit. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. Logically, it does not make sense. But again, once you're, once you're and, and, and this is another thing that one of my assignments is, and, and I, I, I love to share this term, and this, the way we, the Lord has allowed me to express this. And just, once again, defending the truth. When you defend the truth, this is another thing you do. It's a major thing that you do, is that you mm-hmm. break the spell of the faulty narrative. Mm. Did you catch that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Breaking, breaking the spell of the faulty narrative because I'm, I was there. You understand? I'm not. Look, I'm you talk to someone who's gone through the ringer. Everything I'm, I'm expressing they, that's why I'm so passionate. How do they begin to break the spell? Because upon, again, upon going through transitioning, one deals with a lot of backlash, and frustration, <clears throat> and angry anger because right. they're now walking into. They predestined state, right? And they're now walking into that function, that role, that um, that rank, that realm. And like you said, they have to now dispel all of the faulty narrative that ate away at the prophetic seed over their lives. <laughs> hey. That's tough. That's tough. That sounds tough, don't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. How do they begin again? Again, it's having. Let me. I just. Let me shift gears here. Let me talk about worship and intimacy for a second. Mm-hmm. Because if if you're going to be a son of God in this religious and, and function and be a son of God in this religious wilderness, you're going to have to have a passionate, intimate worship and connection with God. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing that's going to keep you sane. Yeah. Because we're, we're living in a day, we're, we, are, we are in that day where right is, mm-hmm. becoming, where right is, is being called wrong and wrong mm-hmm. is, becoming, because, is being called right and it's being done right from mm-hmm. that pulpit. Come on. This is the day we're living in. You understand? Mm-hmm. And, 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 and God told me just what, uh, uh, not even seven days ago, the only, the only authority, the only voices that can, that can that can save the church now are the voices of the elect because everybody's already deceived. Yeah. So the voices of the elect, they're, they're the only vanguard. They're the only voices. They're the only, the only uh, true authority that can, that can preserve God's church and bring it, and bring it back, take it back into the in, in direction of the kingdom. And when you said deceive, deceive as in doctrine, um, tradition, Deceived by what, or cause one to? When you said deceive, because one could. Okay, I'm saying. Go ahead. No, well, all of the above, right? Mm-hmm. Christian Christianity, though we are Christians, right, followers of Christ. Mm-hmm. Christianity is a religion, and the kingdom of God is not a religion. Mm-hmm. Come on. It's not a religion. It's not a religion. Mm-hmm. It's, it, it's oh, God. I can't stress mm-hmm. that enough. Christianity mm-hmm. is a religion. This is why we have mm-hmm. all of these factions and these denominations. We, I mean, thousands by the thousands. And we have all these doctrines and dogmas out of one Bible. How is that so? Because religion mm-hmm. is the problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Bible calls us believers, <laughs> and they only call us Christ Christians because we follow Christ. But spirituality overrules that. Spirituality, like as you going back to said, like you said, intimacy and worship, having that relationship with God, the bond, the truth that comes, the encounter that comes, override that um, <clears throat> that religious identity. That, that's why when one is going through stages of awakening, they separate themselves, disconnect themselves from what they thought or know 
<clears throat> that gave them identity. But really what it did was strip away of the originality or the authenticity of who they are. So now they're trying to run, like at almost in the form of chasing who they are to run into themselves, to find um, themselves because of, um, like you said, all the different voices or narratives that told them what they think or who they think that they are or who they think they are not. So becoming or being that voice for the wilderness and for the hidden place, the voice now becomes silent, and the voice also becomes silent. It also goes into dormancy because though they have a voice, they can't speak because they don't know who they are. It doesn't, their voice, their sound, and yet their consciousness doesn't align. So how could they become the voice of the apologetics to be defending or defend the gospel if one is holding on to the religiosity versus yet the relationship of spirituality to um, pretty present who they are in the earth realm? Okay. First things first, you have to know that you already are a voice, mm. right? No man can make you a voice. No humanity has that power to make you a voice. No one has that. You already had a voice. Now, is there training? Is there development? Absolutely. Is there times and seasons? Absolutely. Is there mentorship? Absolutely. Are there pastors? Mm. Of course. But we know the word. And the scripture says, though you have many many teachers, you don't have many fathers, right? In fact, it says, you, though you have 10,000, they actually gave a number, 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet not many fathers, right? Oh. So, I've, so, so I've learned the hard way. Abba has to be your father. You have to know God as father. Mm-hmm. You have to know him as the son, and you have to know, definitely know him as Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. right? Once you, okay. once you settle, okay, how am I going to say this? Because um, you're talking about, and I'm just giving it the way I'm hearing it. It's amazing how in the world, the world champions and tells you to express yourself. Do what okay. you feel. Go where you will go. You know what I mean? Go with your heart, these type of things. Though I don't ascribe to many, much of that, however, the idea of just being who you really are, the world is always at the edge of the church. The church is the only place where it tells you you are called, but shut up and listen to me until I tell you you're ready. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. So uh, it's the, oh, that's, go what ahead. Christianity had reshaped. that's what Christianity has reshaped um, one's thinking or man's thinking. They shaped it to strip away at the core of the essence of their originality or purpose. That's the key word. They, they, Christianity has, was put in place to strip away of purpose and destiny. So one could present themselves but without power, elimination. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So re- Go ahead. Mm-hmm. No, we're, we're saying the same thing. We're saying the exact thing. And again, I'm, 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 mm-hmm. I'm trying not to have, I don't sound like I'm fussed because really I'm excited. I'm in joy, really. Uh, mm-hmm. But I do, I am full of righteous indignation because it took mm-hmm. me years, it took me years to find central balance in my own house because somebody was telling me that I couldn't be blessed until I, unless I went through the priest. I got you. When, when, when okay. Jesus has, Jesus, he, it, he, he got rid of the middle man. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And then the scripture mm-hmm. tells us that we are seated in heavenly places now with him. You understand all of the all of this all of this put the all of these empowering scriptures that speak to our status in him. But yet when I go to church, I'm 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 it's like a schizophrenic type of experience. Mm-hmm. You know. I, you should okay. You should be able to, you should be able to just simply be yourself. And I like how, how uh uh Noel Jones said one time he was in an interview and um it totally took the guy off, 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 off courses. They were talking about divestments. Mm-hmm. And he simply said, Jesus came so that we could be normal in him. Mm. Right? He, said, mm. he, 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 he touched his robe and he said, you know, all right, we'll give it a shot. It's a robe, mm-hmm. but we'll put it on. But see, this is how, this is all of this is part of the religion. There's the ceremonies 
and the, and the washing of cups, all these things that the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees did to make, them, to make you think that they're holy. Mm, come on. You feel me? And so now you're making mm-hmm. me feel like if I, if, I, if, if I miss a Tuesday night service, if I miss a Bible study, or if I don't do things the right way according to the, the liturgy or according to the, the denominational uh, 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 infrastructure, that I'm missing God. Mm-hmm. No, 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 mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Jesus said, a... mm-hmm. "Say it again." Presentation, imagery, presentation. Look, man. Look, man. Mm-hmm. We're dealing with we're dealing mm-hmm. with unseen forces. We're dealing with real demons. We're dealing with mm-hmm. ancient spirits. And the reason why I can't get fortified is because you got me running around here doing things, doing religious antics, but you're not teaching me in the word how to be a son of God. Come on. Come on. Mm-hmm. Come on here. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on. Think, think, about, think mm-hmm. about any child. Lord, have mercy. Think about mm-hmm. any child that knows who their father is. Mm-hmm. Especially take, take someone who's been decorated in, in the military. Take mm-hmm. these, 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 the kids of somebody who's been decorated. The esteem, the focus. You understand the identity that they have? Mm-hmm. Listen, my, this word talks directly to me because this is my father's word to me. And I dare say this, because you know the original manuscripts and the scrolls, they didn't have punctuations, and they didn't have what we have right now. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I would dare to say and this is nothing against seminary or anything, anything like that. Because I, I love, listen, you got to know. But mm-hmm. here's the thing. It was never intended. Where we are with this religion, where we are with the scrolls and the scriptures, it was, it was God's, ne- God was not God's intention for us to, for it to, to come this way. Mm-hmm. How, how do I know that? Because it's as simple as a family. The yeah. Bible is about a king and his kids, period. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. It's about a king. It's about a royal family. And it's about the sons and the daughters in the earth taking over the family business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we, but we made it about accolades, mm-hmm. right? We made it about ranks. We made it about hierarchy. You understand? We made it about denominations. We demanded that. Am I off? Am I, am I, am I saying too much? No, no, no. You're right. We've lost focus. Lost focus on the true <clears throat> kingdom mandate. Lost focus. Mm-hmm. Lost focus. And, then and, so, and so now I, I come out of the world. I come out. The scriptures tells me that I'm free from sin, death, hell, and the grave. And I come out of the bondage of the world, but I come into the bondage of religion. Mm. <laughs> And here's, the, here's the, and here's the detriment and the deadliness and the poison of religion because we immediately associate religion with, with liturgy and, you know, pious and lofty, you know, rituals and all like that. No, 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 no. Religion means to rebind, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it means. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. emphasis, okay. the emphasis is the knowledge, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Because whatever, whatever knowledge you agree to, that is the knowledge that's going to dictate the rule of your life. Yes. Yeah. So if you got somebody mm-hmm. telling you false doctrine and showing you a false image of the church, you're going to naturally think that's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? Until you get in that word for yourself mm-hmm. and you start reading scriptures like, as, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then you get over mm-hmm. the revelation, and the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of, of our Lord and his Christ. Well, how is that going to happen? Mm-hmm. That's not going to happen sitting on pews. Mm. That's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. Singing songs and, 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 and leading praise and worship. No, 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 no. You got to go get into the world to make disciples. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. He didn't say go into the church. He said go into the world. Yes. Oh God. Mm-hmm. Oh God. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's it. Yes. Mm-hmm. So coming to a close, what is the message that you have to the? modern day apologetic. Those that are emerging and are finding their place or their 
find their footing as they build, as they implement, and as they go forward with the blueprint to advance the kingdom of God. What is your message or delivery to the modern-day apologetics, those that will defend the gospel, those that will be the defender of the gospel? Okay. I would have to say this. First, this, this is the premier. This is the number one thing um, that I know that should happen. It must happen. And that is mm. you must be in a constant state of consecration. Mm. You must, Lord Jesus, Lord have mercy. You must fast and pray. Mm. You must pray in the spirit. Mm. You must have an intensified worship life. You must become or learn how to become an intercessor, not even just for, for, for people, for yourself first, right? Mm. Because the thing with the intercessor, this is the power of intercession. You're not just standing in the gap, or you're not just praying for a person. You're praying as that person. Mm. You, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, again, answering your question, conflict, a life of committed consecration that you yeah. don't walk in the flesh that one time, mm-hmm. mm. right? Yeah. You, and oh Lord, have mercy. And, and and it sounds simple what I'm saying, and it sounds elementary, but this is this is it. Because if you don't, mm. if you don't discipline yourself to have a consecrated life, to live a crucified life, so says the scriptures. If you don't live a crucified life, we're all going to be in trouble. Mm-hmm. We're all going to be in trouble because because oh Lord. The word. Specifically, specifically said to for those that are defender of the gospel or who will defend, because we, um, <clears throat> upon going forth to execute what God has given them, their, their scope and mindset is: I'm building ministry, I'm executing ministry, ministry, ministry. But at the same time, one could build and execute ministry and still not defend. They will, they will not defend themselves um, right. against the vision of what God has given them. They're taking it on personal. And forgetting right. that, that they are the sender, that mediator, that go between, that voice, that advocate, that agitator, right. that revolting, that represents and, and is that ambassador for right. kingdom view, kingdom advancement. You see what I'm saying? They'll, they'll, uh, right. there's a, so therefore, we have a lot of um, translation, uh, so be one language, interpretation. So they go from one saying that they're defending the uh, uh, kingdom, but it's all about personal. So when things happen, oh, it's an attack and an attack, and then immediately they go into a personal mode and put up a wall of um, defense, forgetting that as you defend or become the, the defender, like Paul did, defending the kingdom view and his advancement, then it's no longer personal. It's like David is like, who's the <laughs> uncircumcised Philistine? He was a defender. Who's going to right. find my God? And you become a defender. So that's why I specifically said that. I love your answer. That's why I specifically said that. Um, did you want to add anything else to that? Well, well, you, well, just just because simply because you mentioned Paul. Paul mm-hmm. said the reason why Paul was that Paul is the the greatest defender, and meaning that he's the chief writer of the New Testament, is because he lived a crucified life. Yeah. He lived a life of consecration. Mm-hmm. So it was never about it was never personal for him. It was never about his will. It was it was he was never in his feelings, even though sometimes mm-hmm. he was. But 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 the, the 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 mission was the same. The mission is I have to advance this kingdom, and I can't do it in my flesh. I can't do it do it in my own ingenuity. Mm-hmm. I can't do it in my own skills and my skill set and my education. Mm-hmm. I have to do this by mm-hmm. the spirit of God. Yes. Yeah. Mhm. Yes, that is so important. Yes. So um, so a lot of them are still fighting a personal battle on the battlefield, but our casualties still fighting personal battles, emotional battles. Got you? It's powerful. Well, well let, me, powerful. let me say this, too, because we they're not alone. We're not alone. We mm. have to pray that God, God sends us to our tribe. Mm. That's true. And that's Come another on. trick of the enemy. Have you thinking you're out there by yourself and you just, you know, you just, I, gotta, I just got to do this. Somebody got to do this. No, 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 no. We're going to do this together. Mm. And we're going to do this yeah. the right way. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And, mm-hmm. and, and, and intimacy is the seal of covenant. Mm-hmm. Intimacy is the seal of covenant, starting with the father mm-hmm. first and starting with the brethren. Find me, some, mm-hmm. find, me, find me two people who are intimately involved and who intimately love it. And, once it, it, and you, you hear me, 
okay, let me say this term because I've coined a term. I use another term for, for intimacy. I say fearless bonding. Mm, come on. Fearless bonding. No, come on. Show me someone who fearlessly bonds with God and fearlessly mm-hmm. bonds with his brother, and I'll show you someone who can take over the world. Mm-hmm. 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 But we're again, we're talking. I'm just, I just took, I took a left turn there, but it's, it's still kind of this is critically important because mm-hmm. it can't be about me. Mm-hmm. It can't be about what I feel. It can't be about me trying to. Get, I'm gonna get them back, and I'm gonna show them I'm gonna be a prophet. I'm gonna be an apostle. This is where all these crazy churches come from. You get offended, you go start a church. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Let me get on my face and cry out to God, Lord, you mm-hmm. lead me where I go. Mm-hmm. Come on. <laughs> we can go on and on right here. I'm just, I'm loving this. Mm-hmm. This is, this is. Men, I'm listen. I'm, I'm gonna get on my face after this phone call. Mm-hmm. I mean, thank you so much uh, for joining us on tonight. And for those that will be listening, please like, share, press hashtag replay, leave your comments, and also if you have any questions and. Um, mm-hmm. Um, you could always hit up a apostle uh, like on apostle um, Will Burden <laughs> and, and his page. Yes. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Hi, yellow. Um, there's more. There's depths to this conversation. There's height, and there's also dimension to this conversation. This is just um, nuggets, and at the same time, an opening up for one to think and process, and also to evaluate oneself. In order for us to be the defender of, of 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 the gospel, we have got to remember or to have in our mind that we are defending the gospel.